right. Um, just uh, I've talked to some of you about this already. I had the procedure done on October 18th, and um, like these guys are saying, it was minor. Um, I won't go through the details because you've heard them already. But um, afterwards, I hoped to have something. When I was right on the table, I hoped to feel something right away. I didn't. Within the next couple of days, I was sitting at the computer thinking, oh, okay, maybe it's not going to work for me. And then gradually, <laughs> I started to wiggle my feet. And I said, oh, this is weird. My shoes are too big. It's like, oh, my socks are lumpy. What's going on? I haven't felt those sensations in ages. So that was that was the beginning of the improvements that I saw. Um, they are minor for some, but when you have MS, these little things are huge. And it's going in the right direction, which is one of the biggest things. You're improving rather than gradually getting worse. So these were all very good signs. And then within a couple of days, I, again, I was sitting at the computer, which I do too much, too, I spend too much time at. Um, but I started to, to feel some more circulation in my thighs. For me, it was the thighs that went first, the <coughs> circulation in the thighs. Like suddenly I couldn't walk across my yard because you had to lift your legs to get through the grass. Now I can lift my legs. It's still not easy, but they're lifting. And then, so this is sort of the way things progressed for me. Um, I started to, Mike and I made a deal that we would walk every day um, around the block, which was a challenge for me and I usually would do it kind of holding on to Mike for balance as I went. Um, gradually, I didn't need to hold on, and I was noticing, a, about a month into it, I was noticing, I was looking at Mike when he was speaking while I was walking. That would have been impossible before that. I wasn't holding on, I was looking at him, and I wasn't losing my balance. And then we were out a couple of really nice nights walking, and I was looking up at the stars. I used to do a lot of astronomy, and I was looking up at the stars, I was like, oh, there's, there's, Cassiopeia, there's, you know, there's, I was just going, anyway, I haven't, I haven't been able to see the stars for a long time, visually, I guess my improvement, my, my vision was improved, but also just that I could look up while I was walking, that was ridiculous to me, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize just how, how important that was to me, to be able to look up at the sky while I was outside, without holding on to, to a whole lot of things, so these, again, are little improvements to some, to me, they were major. Um, before long, I was walking more and more because I was getting more circulation in my legs, um, increasing a block every couple days. So I would add a block. Now, the most I've ever done is, is three blocks, um, so I'm still not, you know, running marathons or anything like that. But, but then after two months, I started to go backwards, which happens in some cases. Um, from what I'm, I'm learning more about that, um, and so I started thinking, oh, my veins are closing, I'm restenosing, I'm going to have to go back and do it again. Which to me, I would have done, it was so worth it. And so I went for my follow-up Doppler in Barrie, and my blood is still flowing. So that was really good news, so everything, everything is flowing great. One thing they did notice is that I still have uh, some reflux in my deep cerebral veins when I was in one position. So when I was, when I was upright, I had still had the reflux in my deep cerebral veins. But when I was laying down, it was fine. So that means I didn't qualify for anything, any of the criteria for CCSVI still. So now maybe that's something that will work itself out over time. I'm hoping that it will, because it's still not good when you have blood flowing backwards without oxygen towards your brain. So anyway, um, I started to, probably because I felt like I was restenosing, I stopped going for walks with Mike. And gradually I started to feel like I had less energy and all sorts of things like that. And then the last couple of days, it's been a little bit warmer. I don't like cold weather either, so that's part of the reason for, for not walking. But we went out for a, a couple of walks last couple of days, and by last night, I walked three blocks again, and I didn't hold on. Well, I grabbed him once when the snow got deep, but there was, in, in our neighborhood in Bridalwood, there is about an inch to two inches of snow on the sidewalks because it doesn't get plowed very often. And I was walking through that. So for me, that's huge, because I, was, I had to lift my legs to get through the snow. So that, again, is one of the first things that went for me. So that was that's huge. And so that's, that's really encouraging to me, that I will continue to improve. Now, some of the people very much involved with CCSVI, some of the, I can't talk to the doctors here, of course, but some of the technicians in Albany here, some of the experts that I can talk to are saying, this is helping with a lot of people. A lot of people have big improvements at first, and then they 
kind of regress a little bit, but then a lot of people within the three to six months post angioplasty window will start to see improvements again. So I seem to be in that in that ballpark right now. Anyway, that seems to be what's going on with me. So, but as you can see today, I've been running around here with a lot of energy, and I can still lift my legs up. So this is really good. I'm really excited. So. Anyway, that's giving me incentive to go for more walks, and even if it's cold, I'll have to be pushing myself. And as Maria would say, where'd she go? Um, I have to drink more water. I've been really bad at that. That seems to make a really big difference. Maria's kind of the water police on Facebook. So, so I'm gonna have to report back to you regularly about how much water I'm drinking. When I, when I remember to do it, it's making a difference. Anyway, and there are um, a lot of other people who have important things to say. Um, Jeff Baker is next, and Jane, I don't know if you're going to come up. You're going to come up, too, because Jane was a witness, too. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Baker, and it looks like I'm the only guy on the list, which is kind of odd, but anyways. Yeah, I'm lucky. Anyways, uh, I was actually diagnosed in uh, 2009 in January, and uh, with MS, at the secondary progressive phase. And uh, it was a big shock to me. I didn't even know what MS was. So, of course, then I started doing a lot of research, and then in November of '09, when, you know, we all watched the show on W5, that just kind of made sense. And uh, anyways, uh, so uh, I guess to make a long story short, I'm not going to be as long-winded as a lot of these other women. <laughs> but um, I actually went to Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, I went to Toronto first, and I got tested. I had a score of two out of five which is actually that minimal requirement there for CCSVI. Uh, when um, I went to Providence on, on November 23rd of uh, last year, and uh, on my right side I was 60% plugged, and on the left side I was 70% plugged. Now they used a size 20 balloon, which at that time I actually held the record for uh, the balloon size because I have pretty big veins. That would be pretty close to 7 eighths of an inch which is a fairly large size balloon. And I understand that, um, uh, that the doctor over, uh, I, I think over in uh, Egypt, he actually was up to a size 23 balloon and he was having, a, I guess, a lot of success with, uh, you know, they're the larger size balloons. However, uh, I felt immediate relief, um, as I guess maybe Jane can attest to. And then I kind of went like Amy after about two to three weeks, I kind of started to regress a little bit. So I was talking to Amy, and you know she was actually talking about the restenosing and things like that. And you know, I, it, it just kind of runs through your mind. However, um, my improvements are that I don't have any more fatigue. I got all kinds of energy, and uh, my walking is not so great. And uh, I guess I'm kind of like Maria, like I think I can do things, but I still can't. So. I'm actually going to physio, and uh, I'm, or I'm going to work on my walking uh, because of my strength in my uh, legs and my toes and everything is, uh, I guess, probably not up to what it was before. However, uh, would I have the procedure done again? By all means, and uh, I don't know why why they don't do it here. Uh, you know, it's um, and I guess the caveat in the whole thing too is, you know, I mean. If you're looking at cost, uh, if I can claim this on my income tax, I'm going to get back more uh, than it would cost to do the procedure here. So, I mean, that's doesn't really make sense to me. You know, if they can do the procedure here for $1,500 and people are spending, you know, uh, it personally cost me, it was actually $6,500 in expenses. You're looking at another $1,000. So, you know, I mean, if you can claim that as medical expense, well, that's going to, you know, probably be more than the $1,500. So it doesn't make sense, you know, uh, I guess if you look at it that way. However, uh, am I glad I got it done? Yes. And thanks, everybody, for letting me speak. <laughs>